What's going on guys? So today is the maiden voyage of the Surveyor Legend. This is our new 2024 collaboration unit from the folks over at Forest River. Paid an insane good price for this. I really appreciate it. Big shout out to the folks at Surveyor, which is a division of Forest River, for uh, for helping me get this thing because quite frankly, um, you know, it's a YouTube channel. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to create content for you all. And even though they would have given us an insanely good price on any model they had, including the Grand Surveyor, which is like on the upper travel trailer scope when it comes to amenities and such but uh the surveyor legend is their more cost conscious model and um super cool still loaded with content loaded with features but we got to pick whichever one we want and they were going to give us a really good price on any of them uh we chose to get a smaller one we chose to get one that we think the average family of four the average family of five you know couples would prefer and we chose a floor plan that I think meets that criteria. That said, we have to get this thing inspected and registered. So I have to go down, get it inspected. I got to get it registered and, uh, and before we can do anything. And a lot of people are saying, well, why don't you use the Denali? Well, I don't have the Denali. My wife's driving it. So I'm using the tool that I have. And then I'm also waiting for uh, the B&W Continuum hitch with all the parts to come in so I can install it on here because I really want to tow this thing with that Continuum behind the Denali. So today we're going to use the 450. I think it's enough truck to handle this and uh, we're going to hitch it up, get it on the road. But before we do that, got to pull the slides in, retract the scissor jacks and uh, get everything taken care of. We got water hooked up to it. I have power hooked up to it and I just want to get it ready to travel. So we're going to do that. Hang tight. I'll be right back. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is disconnect the water, which is already turned off. I'm going to take this little quick connect valve off. I don't need to keep that on there all the time, so I can put the plug there. Then I'll simply plug this into the end of that. Easiest way to do that would be to put it down. Go like that. I'm going to disconnect the power from the unit. Don't have the AC or anything running. I did learn something from the the folks who made that really cool replacement plug is that you do want to be sure when you do this you uh, or whenever you tighten this down you want to make sure that that is threaded properly and it's super super tight so I already have power shut off I want to go ahead and put that down one thing I've installed here is the Rhino end cap here because they put the dump valves right at the end that's super awesome um, this gives me the ability to see if there's anything in there before releasing it and actually, this gives me the ability to see what's in there and when it's cleared out. Because the end caps are there, I don't have to worry about opening it up and a ton of sludge coming out. I have time to hook it up before I do that. And, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get to the other side. Let's get my tire chocks out. We're going to go inside, pull the slide out in. Before I do that, let me move stuff out of the way. I got a dehumidifier in here. You guys probably remember this thing. Basically lift that up. Drain it all out. And this right here is going to be really cool. I bought this on Amazon. And I think it's going to be a great little feature to add. And I'll go over that in a future video. I'm going to grab this and move this somewhere safe as well. No, I'll throw it in the same box down here. That, I can just leave that in the sink. All right, coming into the bathroom. Everything is secure. You know what, just for travel, let's take that off. Throw that down there. All right, so we are looking good here. Doors closed, everything's closed, TV secure. Got my tire pressure monitoring system here, and it is ready to go actually. So it's already paired to the RV. I just keep it in here so it's charging. I'll move that to the truck. Okay, I think we are good. Just need to pull the slide in. Nice rack and pinion slide out. Moves in pretty dang quick. And again, once the slide out is in, you if you take the tabletop off, you can actually move around in here a little bit if you need to. Okay. So you'd have to take this off, set it sideways so you can kind of worm your way through here. Um, otherwise, you could put the slide out just a little bit if you needed to. 
but I think we are good. I'm going to bring this in the truck with me. Yep, we are good to travel. So I'm just going to lock up the RV. Okay, got to put the steps up. Make sure your door's open all the way. It'll go like this, shake it off a little bit. Locked into place. Okay, now i got to get in here. I'm going to grab my little bit so I can retract all of the stabilizers. There's four of them. because I'm going to use it again once I get back. Okay. Let's close the door handle. Raising the tongue jack up just a little bit. All right. Now we can back up to it, start the process of hitching up. Everything looks good here. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead and lower her down. See what the tongue weight is on my way safe. Right at 500 pounds worth of tongue weight. Not super heavy right now. hook to my little hole back there that Ford puts in for your breakaway chain or breakaway cable for your brakes I want to make sure my chains are crossed down here but you really can't do it very much because the way this is designed you, you don't really have the capability of just totally crossing your chains but this should work now a lot of these chains, they fit the new Ford openings a lot easier than they used to in the past. Okay, so we are cradled in the event the hitch drops for some reason. Gotta hook up our power. All right, so we are hooked up to seven way. Got our disconnect in place. A little bit longer slack than I prefer. Looks like that might have been bent down. Okay, so I just looped it a little bit around some of the chains right here just so I'd have the uh, slack I need. We'll move this aux block out of the way. If you didn't watch the video I did on those things, you gotta check it out. Those things are insanely strong. So we're good. Let's just do a uh, trailer light check real quick and get ready to hit the road, then we'll adjust our trailer brakes. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm looking at the reflection on the back of the building, which you may be able to see, or the front of the building, which shows that the turn signal's working. Now I've turned on my hazard lights, so I'm gonna go back here, make sure that the parking lights work and the hazard lights work. Okay. We're in good shape. Everything looks good. TPMS is showing that the tires are good. Everything's batched up. We're ready to go. Okay, so I know there are probably more than a few of you who are wondering, is he going to lock his coupler? I actually had to pull the truck forward so this thing would actually lock back in place, and I had to get the lock out of my truck. So, yes, I'm going to lock my coupler. Now we are good to go. Okay, we are taking off. And yes, you can't even really tell that it's back there. Okay, so we're on the road now, and you know, it's kind of interesting because I haven't hauled a travel trailer, RV, in some time. It's actually probably been, shoot, I'm, I'm guessing probably 
two to three years or longer since I've actually hauled a travel trailer RV. Now, I say that the way I'm saying it because I've hauled several conventional trailers. Um, I have a lot of them myself and I've hauled other trailers that come off of the bumper. Now, uh, the reason why I'm making this distinction is because this trailer in its current configuration weighs less than my dump trailer does empty. So my dump trailer empty is 14 feet long and it's probably another four feet, so about 18 feet long, maybe 19 feet to the ball. Uh, and it's about 5,500 pounds empty. Whereas this trailer is well beneath that. I think it's like 50, maybe, maybe right around the same actually. Let's just say they're the same, 5,500 pounds roughly. Uh, the way this one's sitting, it's probably closer to 5,700 pounds just because I do have some things in the back of it. But what's interesting here is that uh, the way a travel trailer feels compared to any of my other trailers is so profoundly different. Because of how the axles are positioned on travel trailers and even fifth wheels and things like that, it's just a lot different. You know, you can definitely tell it's back there, which is interesting, right? From a power perspective, you can't. The truck just hauls it no problem. Even from a payload perspective, it's, it, it just tows no problem. But whenever you go over a bump, or something uneven in the road, you definitely feel how the axles are more placed in the center and you feel that the trailer box is rocking on the axles forward and backward a little bit. And you can definitely feel it just a little bit. You can feel where it kind of unloads some of the weight off of the back and then loads it back. Um, you know, for this truck, it's, it's not a problem at all because towing it absolutely is a pleasure. But where you might feel something is if you had a half ton truck or something with lighter suspension, only because when you have soft suspension in the back, they're gonna compress easier and they're gonna uncompress easier. And because the truck's lighter in general, you're gonna feel it. Um, I'm not gonna say it's gonna be an uncomfortable towing experience, but it's certainly gonna be a different towing experience. And that's the thing that I just wanted to kind of talk about real quick is the fact that whenever you, you haul a travel trailer versus any other type of trailer, they have a different towing profile than anything else you're really gonna tow because they have furniture inside of them. They have a slide out, they have things going on, and then they position the axles more towards the center of the trailer versus the back of the trailer. So you're not feeling that offloading effect like you feel with some other types of trailers. So if you're used to hauling like a, maybe a landscaping trailer around or even a cargo trailer, or perhaps a dump trailer where the axles are positioned a little further back, you might feel where it loads weight on your hitch if you go over bumps because you get that rocking effect. But again, the difference here is that you feel it offloading the weight as well whenever the trailer wants to rock forward and backward slightly. And I hope that's making sense uh, because again, I just towed two of my other trailers yesterday. And by towing those trailers, it was kind of a direct capability for me to see how the differences were between this trailer and those trailers. Um, again, no problem at all. It's not any type of a towing issue. I, I, I don't think most people would care that much. And I think whenever you tow a travel trailer a few times, you kind of get over it. Um, but if you do have a lighter vehicle, and when I mean lighter, I mean half ton and below, because those trucks weigh so significantly less than heavier duty trucks, you're gonna feel it a little bit more. You're definitely gonna know you have a trailer back there because when you hit those bumps, when you hit those expansion joints, it's definitely gonna wanna make that rocking approach from the trailer rocking backward and then forward, backward then forward on the axles. And again, it's just gonna give you a little bit of a, a different feel than any other type of trailer that you might tow. And this is a small trailer. It's 26 feet, six inches long total. Uh, I believe the body of it itself is like 22 feet long. So it's, it's a very small trailer in terms of RVs. It's not teardrop size. It's not like super small R pod size. And it's certainly taller than a lot of travel trailers because it has a, a taller ceiling profile to it. But I guess the point that I'm trying to make here is that whenever, again, you haul an RV, it's just different. It's a little bit different feeling. And uh, I was really trying to feel for that. So it's not that I'm trying to be picky. It's not that I'm trying to you know, criticize it. It's just that I want you guys to know that it has a different feel to it than a trailer that you might normally be used to hauling, even if it's a boat trailer. Boat trailers also have the axles positioned more towards the back than an RV would. So 
just something to keep in mind. And uh, towing it's no problem at all for the 450, um, as you probably would have already figured out. Uh, where it's gonna be interesting is when I hitch this thing up to the Denali. Once I get the, the weight distribution hitch in, um, and I'm able to hook it all up and get it all dialed in properly, um, I really wanna share with you what my experience is with that specific hitch setup. Anyways, guys, we are headed over to uh, one of the places I go to get my trailers inspected. Uh, they're a little out of the way, but it's definitely worth it because they're absolutely top-notch. We're going to get the trailer inspected so I can take that inspection down to the county or the city and pay my taxes on this thing and get it registered. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up. We'll talk to you again very, very soon.